everyone welcome back to another video today we're going to be doing a pretty interesting deck it's kind of like an old deck of some sorts because we are using obstagoon as the main pokemon but we are mixing in a new pokemon into this so maybe that will definitely change up the dynamic of the different playstyles but i guess you guys will have to find out when you play it for yourselves but if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like, share, comment, and subscribe, it really means a lot. However, with that being said, let's begin. So to start off, it's no mystery that we're going to be playing this particular ratio here. The Galarian Linoon is not really too amazing. Now, for certain decks out there, playing a stage 1 at 4 copies can actually be beneficial. However, it's really specific as to what deck you're playing. In this case, the stage 1 doesn't really do too much. And you really just want to go for the Obstagoon because it deals the most damage and the ability is the most devastating against the opponent. So with that being said, this is the common ratio we go for. Of course, the basic Galarian Zigzagoon itself is also really amazing for the deck, being able to ping so much damage onto your opponent. However, when it comes to the new addition to our deck, we're going to be playing the Crobat engine. Now this is an engine that came out quite a while back in Battle Styles, but I just haven't seen anyone really utilizing this, even though I do think it's quite decent. Of course, I don't see myself using this a lot at all, this might be the one specific occasion where I do use it, but I do think that the abilities of both uh, Golbat and Crobat are quite decent, and it allows you to play a deck without Professor's Research, and also gives you somewhat of a backup attacker just in case you need it as well so it is uh, not bad in some certain points of views but with that being said it's something I do like so if you use Golbat to evolve you get to draw two cards if you use Crobat to evolve you draw three cards I think it's quite decent it's not necessarily the worst thing ever but maybe playing this particular ratio is a bit much for the deck, I might cut one of each off. But for the time being, I don't really have too many issues with this, given that I'm no longer playing research in this particular build. And of course, as a dark deck, I think it's really really good that we're playing the Crobat V as well. Just because it already synergizes, being that it's a dark Pokemon, it's easily searched out via peers. But at the same time, it's just so good even in generic terms. Now for items, I did actually think about this quite a bit because when it came to searching, the four quick balls kind of made sense of course, we were playing so many different basic Pokemon. However, initially when I was playing Level Ball and Evolution Incense, believe it or not, but it's quite tempting for you to actually want to play four copies of each just because it works so much. I mean, you have so many cards or so many Pokemon that is less than 90 HP, so to play 4 level balls, it honestly is tempting. And same thing as the Evolution Incense, you're playing 2 stage 2 lines and you're playing the full amount of them as well. So you'd think I'd play 4 copies of Evolution Incense, but I realised you didn't really need too many searcher cards. You could easily just draw into them with no issue whatsoever. So this is uh, the final ratio I ended up choosing, but I guess you guys could always just uh, test that around and whatever you feel comfortable with, you can just run with that. Of course, we're playing four rare candies. We can't play any more than that. If we could, we would, because we are playing plenty of a stage two lineup here. So yeah, if I could, then it would be great. Otherwise, we'll just work with the maximum amount we also have over here Fan of Waves, which is not too bad. It is definitely really nice to just disrupt the opponent. And seeing as special energies just occur a lot these days, uh, Fan of Waves is just becoming more and more popular. In fact, with the League Battle decks coming out soon for both the Urshifu decks, you are definitely going to be expecting a lot of the Rapid Strike energy and Single Strike energies running about. And also, I believe in... It's not Fusion Strike, but it's going to be in Brilliant Stars. They actually include this new energy card. I forgot what it was actually called, but it is a special energy. I think it's similar to Twin Energy, though it's called something else, obviously. But with that being said, Fan of Waves will definitely become more prominent in this particular format. 
Next up, because we're playing zigzag goons in this deck at 4 copies, why not just max out on scoop up nets as well? I'm also choosing not to play uh, any of the uh, switches or anything else, just because I felt we didn't really need it, uh, since it's easy to just uh, switch around these Pokemon anyway. But I guess uh, that's just up to you guys on that. We are playing Hiding Energy after all. And what's amazing about Hiding Energy is it allows our Dark Pokemon to just switch with no issues whatsoever. Of course, for a bit of disruption, Tool Scrapper is still great. And we're playing the Ordinary Rod. Sometimes we might have to get rid of certain cards from our hands early on. Sometimes uh, we just want to recycle certain cards because... Uh, a few of the other extra copies might still be in the prize zone. So with that being said, to play at least one ordinary rod to recycle everything is uh, definitely well worth it. Now for supporters, we're playing a pretty small number here of supporters. These are the only supporters I'm playing in the deck. So you guys might actually see that I'm not playing any research, I'm not playing Marnie. We don't really need it. We just want this deck to have as much speed as possible. So Piers will search out not only a special energy, well it could just search out any energy card, but it also searches out your dark Pokemon as well. So we're just speeding that up, definitely really nice here. Uh, Bruno, I mean it makes sense right, we're playing a bunch of single prize of Pokemon, so you're going to benefit a lot out of Bruno. And of course, we also have two bosses orders just to establish a bit of control at certain points in the game. And finally, for energy, we're playing four copies of Hiding Dark Energy, allowing us to pretty much just attach to all of our Pokemon, which happens to be dark, and of course that gives them free retreat. But at the same time, we're also playing four copies of Twin Energy, just because all of our Pokemon's attack is actually all colorless, which is definitely fantastic, of course. Meaning, this is all we really need to play for energy. We're not playing any basic energy whatsoever, so to attach all this energy on is definitely really efficient for the deck. It makes it very fast and you'll have no time charging up all of your Pokemon ready for an attack. But of course, this was pretty much it for today's deck profile. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. It is meant to be a very fast deck given that it's a dark deck. It allows you to play certain cards that are unique to the dark energy type. So you do get certain advantages by doing so. And the fact that this is purely dark as well, it just helps out even more. But the fact that our Pokemon also happens to have its own draw power, it again just really helps this deck out a lot. And in your first turn, it will be really easy to get all your resources at the ready. Of course, have fun with this testing it out, and with that being said, thanks for joining me today, I hope you all have a terrific day, I'll see you all next time.